Excited about that. We're having a filling in, but we've still got some spots missing. Hello to the people that are downstairs. Big wave. If they can't see you. Uh, thank you very much, Andy. Oh yeah, if you stand there, you can wave. Uh, it's good that we can be together. Look at the weather. It's just perfect for today. That liquid gold flowing down uh, the sunshine. And I've got to turn my microphone on, and then it will work. Oh, the wonders of technology. There we go. Now you can hear me as well as see me. We've got a, a great service this morning, and we've got lots of different people taking part, and that's the way that it should be. But the person that we want to be most present is our Lord, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? Yeah. Let us pray. Loving and wonderful God, we praise you and we rejoice that we're together. We praise you that we see faces that we've not seen for a little while. We praise you that there are new people here as well. We praise you because they're going to hear a message of love, a message of faith, and most importantly, a message of salvation. And Lord, we pray together that the words that we speak would be honouring to you. The words of living hope would rest on our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are people of a risen king, not a dead king, not one that's in the grave, not one that's on the cross, not one that's in the tomb, but one that is risen. And we're the people of the risen king. Oh, no, it's not that. Nice. We stand up and come to
have a joy in our heart. Not a big smile on our face, but smiles are good. Um, but in our heart, to have this um, real feeling of deep, deep peace. Rejoice. Because we're the church of Christ. Rejoice because we have been saved through Jesus. Mm. That's why we rejoice. That's where all of our happiness and joy comes from. We've been saved. The church of Christ is a saved church. Mm. You know that? Yeah. Yes? yes? We are a saved church if you're in the church of Christ. We're not going to be doomed. We're saved. We're not going to be saved, we are saved. And that's something we can take real, real joy about. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you this morning for salvation. We want to thank you that you do the same today as you did 2,000 years ago. That you save people from the certainty of death. You give new life and hope to all who believe in you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same Messiah that prophets of old spoke of, that laid the pathway to. We thank you today for the cross of Jesus. One where we can lay our burdens down, lay our disappointment down, lay our past down. And friends, today, if you have a past that is bothering you in your heart and in your head, lay that past, that past before the cross of Christ. If past relationships bother you, if failure bothers you, if sin bothered you, Lay it at the cross. Our Lord said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Let us think in our minds and in our hearts how will we let the Lord down? Mm. Let's confess it before him. If you truly repent, you are sorry laid down before Christ. Hear his words to you and to me. Our sins are forgiven. Mm. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Hey friends, I want to show you one of my favourite toys. Here is Jesus the action figure. It is great, and if I, let me get my glasses, because I can't actually read it that. I know that it says, with poseable arms and gliding action, I'm going to come down here to show you, is, is absolutely great. You see, he lifts his arms up and he glides like this. It's fantastic. It really is. And uh, he was so fantastic that he's still in the box. Um, and uh, a lot of us have toys, don't we? Uh, the other day, I was sorting out Bethany's room. And uh, she doesn't know yet, but I sorted out her Peppa Pig bag. And I thought, do you know, she's done with that Peppa Pig bag. We've got a big girl's bag for going to college. So, <laughs> that's going to the charity shop. And sometimes, with our, our toys, Sometimes they never get out of the box, do they? They just stop in the box and there's something to play with. Let me show you this man. He's Jesus' action figure out of the box! And look, he's got gliding arms 
And look, he's got this, and he, and he, and he goes like that. Even out of the box. If he's a toy, he doesn't do us any good. If it's something that you can throw away, it doesn't do us any good. The real Jesus is the one who died on the cross. The way of making good out of the cross and of Jesus is to believe in him in our heart here. To believe he lived and died for you. And he'll have more than gliding action, he'll have more than poseable arms, he'll have more than that. He'll live with you and me forever and ever and ever. He'll be beside us when it's trouble. He'll remind us of hope when it's all gloom. He's the one that makes the difference. Now I've got a question to ask. Who is Jesus to you? Is he in the box? Box here. Never really got out. He's there on the shelf to look at. Have you got him out of your box and played with him for a little bit? Or have you believed in Jesus truly and properly and said, I'm going to live my life for you? There's only one way that he becomes Lord, and that's to accept him in your heart. And we hear stories of people that have do that from being 822 like Donald, or uh, very young, somebody was sharing their testimony with me the other day, and uh, they were 12 years old, and they said, I accepted Jesus as my saviour, and uh, my heart was changed. Who is he for you? Throw away or keep forever? It's a big question. Now, time to see. For our young people go out. Who's, who's going out to Sunday school today? Who's, who's teaching? It is. Me. And is there anybody else? Me. And Lynn. Lynn's downstairs. Whoa. It's not time to go yet. We've got a song first. Come back. Come back. In fact, we're going to do two things with this song, John. We're going to sing it. And we're going to do... Well, I, I can it. You can for I primed some of my action heroes to come and help. Even uh, better. Uh, Chloe and Bethany, whoa, 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 because we need to teach people. Chloe and Bethany, come on. Because I said to Bethany, yeah, 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 yeah. we're going to teach with his hand. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Slow, slow down, slow down, come on. Let's go then. No, 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 let's not go. Let's just hold on two seconds. All right. Yeah, okay, two seconds. Some people know this, some people do not. Let me show you. Oh God, follow me. At the back, oh God, little people sat down, oh God, that's the one. He's a great big God. Yeah? Oh God, he's a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. Little people over there, holds us in his hands. He's high up, right? And you then the scatter scrape them. And then hold the land. That one, especially for you, G. He's wider than the universe, like this, at the back, come on, that's the one, <laughs> and beyond the man of well, his dream. He's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God. Stand up, round right you go, Gordon. Get the red door, let's go. Oh God is a great big God.
71 houses being built down there with a load of new people coming in. We've got um, older people living up at Stenson Court and, and I reckon there's 40 some people there. We've got people on the, the roads that live down there, down there, down there, down there and up there, up there, up there, up there, up there. Guess what? They don't know Jesus. So we need to think to ourselves, how are we going to make Jesus known? It's important, isn't it? We've got to think. We can't just say, well, um, I'll get my action figure out and I'll stand outside like this. <laughs> we need to sit down and say, what are we doing as the church here? How are we going to tell our people that are, old, uh, that are more mature in years that we've got a place for them? How are we going to tell our, our young people? How are we going to tell those from different nationalities? How are we going to do it all? So, 4th of September, have you got me put it in your phones? I didn't see anybody do that. Um, <laughs> I went downstairs, I checked with Lynn, Lynn's the organiser one, she's got it in her diary. It's not on here, because this all ends at the end of August, but we need to get it in. We'll have a fun day, we'll have a nice walk, Gordon will take her on a walk, um, we'll have some nice um, sandwiches, uh, and I don't know where we're going yet. Probably proper, but we have to be Don't you walk with me? No, okay. So we'll put that in your diaries. You know, as a church, it's wonderful to be able to pray for people. You know, when we hear in the community that somebody's not been very well, um, it's our desire and joy to pray for them, isn't it? Mm. And if it's someone we love, like this, we pray all the more. And I, I said, I saw this at the junction, I um, uh, uh, forgot what it was, some event, uh, and I said, and I told her, we prayed for you, not so. He said, I know. And I said, we carried on praying. And I'm still praying. And uh, I, I, I said, she said, oh, thank you. I said, well, why don't you come to church and tell us all about it? Liz, are you okay to come out? She said, I know you're very, very nervous. <laughs> Liz is never nervous. Don't you remember that? Almost six months ago, I was very ill in DRI, having contracted COVID. I was not allowed any visitors, and that included members of my close family. I know that my daughter Michelle contacted Lynn and asked for the church to pray for me. I was in the hospital for three months, and it was long haul until I was eventually allowed home. All the time, Michelle continued to, con to inform Lynn of my progress, and I was aware that you were praying for me. I am thankful 
to God that I have such a supportive family and that I have a family here in the church whose prayers were answered. The proof of that you can all see this morning. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. We thank you for this. We thank you for her healing. We thank you that she thinks of us as family alongside her close relatives. And we pray, Lord, that there'll be more healing and a greater blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me help you down that stairs, young lady. <coughs> to pray for people, aren't we? If someone um, is in trouble or danger or need, <coughs> we're called to pray. And sometimes we don't know all the ins and outs. We don't need to. Because you know who does know all the ins and outs? <sighs> Silent tumbleweed going across. Who knows all the ins and outs, Moses? He does know all the ins and outs. He's known it since the beginning of time. Since when he was making this big wide world. He knew all the ins and outs and knows all the ins and outs. So sometimes we just need to, if you know someone's having a hard time, you just need to go think about them, perhaps picture them in your head, that's what I do. And I say, Lord, bless that person. Make it right for them. You don't have to have all the, you don't have to give a great long list of, uh, oh, that one, the, and the, just bless them. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pray for people. And then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Lord, we do pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to hold us in your hand. We pray for those that have walked away from you. We pray that there will be a returning to faith. And this again will become a Christian nation. We pray for those who have been caught in this pandemic. And we do pray particularly for those who have become very, very poorly or sick. We pray for those who mourn people. Lord, help us in our minds to understand why. We do pray for all who mourn. And there are people here who have lost loved ones a long time ago. And there are others who have lost them very recently. And we think of Sue in particular, who mourns Margaret. We think of Julie Morton as she mourns the loss of Reverend Gordon Morton, her husband and a, and a friend. We pray for those who do not know you, for those whose faith has been a toy <coughs> and not real. We pray, Lord, that they sincerely come to know you through the power of your spirit. We pray for all those who are sick and healing God. We pray that you would touch all that need your touch today. We pray for this, your church, that we would be effective in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. You know our needs today. <coughs> Some of us have deep material needs. Some of us have spiritual needs. And some of us are having problems in our life or in a, with our family's life. And let's just be quiet before God and bring those needs before Him.
you, Lord, that you would hear our prayer. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. It might be useful. If you have a little book to your left on your right. Come on, guys. Yeah, this is hard work this today. It's like right, wading through truth. Can I have a little book to your left on your right? Like this, like this. See the person that's next to you. And just in your mind, or perhaps out loud, I don't know, just say, bless them, Lord. I'm going to look this way. Bless them, Lord. You do the same. Everybody has been prayed for today. You don't need to know the ins and outs. Everybody has been prayed for. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We sing together. It's the time to worship, isn't it? We offer our prayers to the Lord. And let's concentrate our minds on the cross of Jesus Christ. Come, now is the time to worship. Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to
to lead the work of the Persian people, the Farsi speaking or Iranian people, here in Doncaster, in Hull, and also uh, in Sheffield. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we advertised and we didn't get the right person. And it was a, a bit of a blow to us, really, because we said, Lord, what, what's going on here? We prayed and the right person hasn't come. There were some wrong people that came or some people that may not have done the job as well as others. And uh, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a leveler, really. And uh, uh, so we advertised again. And out of the blue, we got this wonderful applicant came. His name's Arman, and he's going to sit, he's sat over there. Um, we had this wonderful applicant come that actually, you know when you've got a tick box, you go tick, 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 little tick. No, tick! <laughs> and our man, he was like, God was answering our prayers. It really was. Um, and so some people will know our man from uh, 420 years ago when he worked for the church before. Um, and, and, and I think most of the people don't actually know him. So I'm going to ask our man to come out and I've asked him to just to tell us a little bit about how he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a good microphone here, brother. You come and use it. And then we'll... There you go, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for, well, not only having us today, but having us really today for uh, this lovely morning. Thank you very much, John. And um, I've been given five minutes, so I'm going to stick to it. And I'll probably need more than five, but you, you shouldn't give a microphone to an Iranian for only five minutes. <laughs> no, <it's that. laughs> um, my name is Arman. Uh, to, to, remind, to remember my name, think of Armani without the I at the end, and the richness and the fame, everything else is the same. So you can remember that. Um, I was born uh, into a Muslim family. Actually, my brother, my twin brother is there. Before together obviously in Iran and although the regime was an Islamic regime you know encouraging and forcing all the you know Islamic ways of life I did not practice my religion uh, that was not more than 20 years ago it was just about you know 50 <coughs> years ago um, my father is still an atheist and none of my siblings today until today uh, practice the religion unfortunately unfortunately um, we were all taught what we needed to know in order to be a good and faithful Muslim. However, I knew God existed. Down in my heart, I knew He was holy, He was perfect, He had created everything, including me, and uh, I knew that uh, He was, uh, well, they said He was complete, He was good, but in my heart, I was not a Muslim. I knew God was not pleased with me, with my lifestyle, you know, I lied, I had girlfriends, I drank, and many other things which were against Islamic uh, ways of life. So the only place I saw fit for myself was hell, which I have just come to understand that in churches uh, they don't preach enough about hell, which you know, I've never preached about hell, but that's what I uh, saw myself going towards. So um, I saw God waiting for me to die so that he can punish me for my sins. And I would only hope to see him before going to hell. Uh, there was no hope for going to paradise. In year 2000, I left Iran uh, for a better life, for better opportunities, and in pursuit of happiness. So I was very worried about my future. I flew out of Iran to Bosnia. And then from there, by land and illegally, without any paperwork, without anything, uh, we uh, were smuggled from Bosnia to Croatia, and then from Croatia to Slovenia, and then from Slovenia into Italy, and then from Italy into France, and then from France into Belgium, and then back to Belgium by mistake because they would put you on lorries and they didn't know where the lorry was going. So, uh, and then from Belgium, we meant to enter the UK. The whole journey took 25 days. 
Uh, it was very dangerous, as I said, no paperwork, no passports, uh, nothing. We were avoiding uh, police all the time. It was like movies, you know, just don't show up at all unless you have to go outside. Um, when we arrived in the UK, we applied for asylum. It was my father's suggestion, probably the best suggestion he ever had for us. He said, uh, base your application on Christianity. Uh, say you were interested in Christianity and they, uh, you know, we were searching, the government found out, they arrested you, they interrogated you, and they said, if you do convert to Christianity, you become a Christian, we will persecute you. So they left you on bail to come back for further questioning, and that was when you fled the country. Obviously, this was all lies. Nothing, none of this had happened at all. But it didn't matter to me. Uh, what mattered was to find a way to, you know, stay in the country. So cutting the story short, how much time do I have? Uh, I said to myself, I will learn about Christianity. It shouldn't be that difficult. You know, I'm good. You know, I will learn. But the problem was I knew nothing about Christianity. I hadn't even met a Christian. I hadn't been to a church. I haven't even touched the Bible, let alone knowing what the message was and understanding it. All I knew was that Jesus was a prophet, he did some miracles, he had a book, just like other prophets, and that was it. And this is the case for, I would say, 95% of Iranians. Mostly they really don't know what Christianity is all about. And that is why I am here, and that is why you have provided this great opportunity for me and my brother to be able to serve Iranians in your share. Um, so, cutting the story shorter again, because it's a long story, uh, we arrived in the UK in year 2000, and no friends, no family, no money, no work permit, I didn't like, uh, oh, I didn't speak the language very well, I still am learning, I don't do it well at all, I didn't like the weather, and I don't know what John saw outside that side, but I still don't like the weather, um, you know. But then, through my English teacher, and I think this is an encouragement for all of you, because you could you know, help Iranians to understand the gospel. Through my English teacher, who shared the gospel with us for the first time in English, uh, then he introduced us to a Bible study which was drawn by Iranians, and it was in Farsi. And then uh, I started going, I was a bit reluctant, but I had to for my application. And everything was a shock from there on because I realized that you know Christ, uh, Christians would call God their father. They said uh, God loves them as a good father loves uh, his children, and that was that couldn't be true. I had never heard something like that. I realized after about six months going to these Bible studies that uh, God sent Jesus Christ to prove that He loves me as I am. And he wants to forgive me, he wants to give me eternal life, and he wants to have a personal relationship, relationship with me. And that was the best opportunity I ever got in the country. And that was very good because, you know, in Iran I didn't know anything about uh, Jesus. So I accepted Jesus into my life as my Lord and Savior, and decided to follow him as my only God for the rest of my life. How long have it been? 420 years? Uh, I've got 10 years left. Um, so, on, in December 2002, me and my brother were baptized, and then I went back to my solicitors about, I don't know, four or five months later, and asked them to inform the government, uh, the Home Office, that everything that I told them about my application was lies, nothing was true, and I've just become a Christian, so it's up to them if they want to deport me back to the country. Uh, the bad news is that, uh, well, the good news is that they didn't, but the bad news is that it took them about nine years not to process my application. Mm. Just, I don't know what was going on. Uh, but then, uh, actually, I was in Doncaster mm. when uh, I received the letter uh, showing that I was uh, granted leave to remain in the country. So, thanks, Gloria God, and thanks, uh, Jesus, for that. I have a lot to share, but I think I'm going to cut the story to the end now, and really thank you for the opportunity for us, and then just pray that, uh, as John said, I will be the right person, because I need a lot of wisdom, a lot of support, and a lot of encouragement to be able to uh, continue the good job.
developed that to a large organization. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> There's no I in our mouth. Uh, there are two actually. Yeah, yeah, besides from those. He's not one of these people that's all about himself. It's something that John the Baptist that said. He said, I should become less and Jesus should become more. Our man exemplifies this in the way that he lives. Jesus should become more and more. And we've met and we've talked properly only, you know, very few times. But every time you bless me. And you're going to bless the, uh, the people from Iran and us as, 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 as your church. But let's pray. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be on our man and Iman. Both the brothers that have been sent here for us to care for. We pray, Lord, that he would find this his home. And he would find support. They both would find love of this family be called to care for them. We pray, Lord, that his ministry would be a blessing to those who receive it, both uh, Persian and English. We pray, Lord, that his feet would be rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. 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 Presenter, I think it's Kelly Baldwin, and she gathers away. And then they get an expert 
in the field. So we <coughs> had Chris Hoy there for cycling, Michael Johnson there for running, and everything else like that. And uh, what they go to them for is because uh, the person who is, uh, is an expert knows a great deal about the sport. Or the, the whatever it is, diving, whatever it is. And they've got a good clue on who's going to be, uh, get the gold uh, medal. And they'll say, so, 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 Joe, it's really great, they have great form, they've got uh, everything else like that. But they don't actually know because the race has not been run. Do you see what I mean? Or the jump has not been jumped. Uh, the pony has not been climbed. It hasn't happened yet. So they, all they can do is, is guess. Now, imagine if you had seen every single race beforehand. Every single dive beforehand. If you'd seen every little horse beforehand. Do you know what? You would know who has won that race. Yes? yes? Do you know what we believe about God? He was there right at the beginning. Right before the beginning, actually. At the end, he's there. And even though that we're here in time, God is there at the end. And he's there at the beginning. All at the same time. He has seen everybody. He's seen us live. He's seen us die. He's seen each and every one of us. He knows who loves him. He knows who just makes a play of it. He knows whose heart has really been invested into him. And Jesus Christ. So God can say, you are elect. I've chosen you. I've chosen you. Because I know you are. I know what it's like. I know. Since the beginning of time, I chose you. Just like we talked about the Jewish people, they were the elect of God. But the elect of God, are those that God, God knows through his, his foreknowledge. It's not a God who's penetrated, who says, I love you, but not you. It's not, that is not God at all. God is the one that knows from the beginning to the end. And friends, he knows whether you have put your heart in him. Some people say, oh, you can have backsliders and this, that and the other. You know, if someone really puts their trust in God, that is it. There's no backsliding. There'll be times when you have ups and downs and ups and downs. If you're having a game of football and you scored the goal, it's in. If you're having a game of football and the goalie reaches out, what's he do? Saves it. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your saviour, guess what? You're saved. You're saved. That's it. There's no more about it. If you truly have your safe. <clears throat> We've not got to worry about what is coming. We're safe. Um, I read um, I read of this chap who, who gives a who talks about Max Licardo. Uh, um, Max Licardo is, is, is a is a Christian writer. He, and he is a very good writer. Um, and he tells a tale of when he went out in, in a boat in a, in a hurricane. And he'd been told by uh, an old sailor that in those circumstances you have to go to the deep water and you let an anchor down on every side. And when you let an anchor down on every side, even in deep water, with a storm tossing about, you'll be safe. And this happened to him. And he went out. And he was frightened, and the waves were buffeting it around, and he let the anchors down. And guess what? He was safe. Friends, our hope is 
that we have a sure and certain faith. And if you put your trust into Jesus Christ, the anchors will hold you. Will hold you. No matter what happens, they will hold you. And this, uh, uh, this letter from Peter, he's writing to uh, the Roman church, and they've been through an awful, awful time. A worse, even worse than I mean, travelling all over Belgium. They've been through an awful time. They've been tried and they've been tested. And some of them are thinking, whoa, dear me, I don't know if I can do it anymore. And there may be people here today that are like that, you know. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can hold out any longer. And what Peter's done is he writes and he encourages them. And he's encouraging you and me today. He says, you might have been through a terrible time. It might have been rough. But I want to give you hope. Hope that you're safe. The faith that we have is imperishable. It cannot be washed away. If you put your trust in the cross of Christ and in Christ, it can't be whistled away. I'm having some work on my house. I'm cutting, I'm doing a, a, an army and I'm cutting a long story, very short. Uh, I've had some work around my house and uh, at Christmas the snow came and it took off the edge of my guttering. And I thought to myself, I know I'm going to have this work done. I'll wait until they put the scaffold, they put the side of the house and I'll go and screw it back up. So I went to <coughs> the scaffolding yesterday and I looked at the barge. Do you know barge boards? Do you fasten guttering to them? Yeah, and wood on the house. <laughs> And this wood, it was like Swiss cheese. It really was. And uh, without a doubt, the rest of it is going to fall off. It is, it is done in. It is perished. Because what you're supposed to do when you have barge doors, or, or what is a good thing to do, is you paint them with bitumen black paint. And you stick them on, the wet water can't get in. And what the person had done 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, I don't know, they just painted the front. So it was like, it looked like it was protected. But the back, was completely open to the rain, and over the time the rain had rotted it and rotted it and rotted it and rotted it. And it was done in. And you know what? I'm going to have to put some more up. Um, and I'm not going to think it's going to be um, my uh, uh, kids' problem when I put my clothes. I'm going to paint the front and I'm going to paint the back, and it's going to stay there. Friends, if you've put your faith into Jesus Christ, it will not perish. It'll be like your bitumen the front and it'll be like your bitumen the back. It is held there. It's imperishable. It, uh, we can sometimes, people sometimes set their faith in different things in the world. Sometimes people set their faith in whom they are. Oh, I've got a really good job and I'm great. Or sometimes put their faith in um, uh, uh, the house or put their faith in, in, in the family. And the things of this world. All these things are open to change. Jobs go. Houses fall down. If we put our faith into Jesus, sure and certain that he will carry us through to the end. That's what Peter's saying, encouraging these people. Our faith is imperishable and it's also it can't be if it's true faith it can't be corrupted it can't be changed and maneuvered and altered if we have true faith it remains that's why it's so important that we take the word of God and we believe it the word of God is great Believe it is better. Mm. And what we're told throughout again and again and again, cutting a long story short, is that this does not fade. Put your faith into Jesus. Put your faith into the living word. That's uncorruptible. 
You know when preachers get up and say all sorts of fine and dandy things? Is it here? Is it here? It's uncorruptible, unchangeable. It is the same. It talks about gold, doesn't it? Gold is the most valuable thing on this on this earth. Lots and lots of gold. I watch um, um, I watch gold rush and gold divers. If any of you watch Discovery, they are proper good, and they they go hunting for gold because it's so 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 precious. And what Peter says is, don't be hunting for gold. There's a, something more precious. More precious. That's your faith. It can never be taken away from you. It will last you for eternity. <clears throat> That's when you've died. This is gone. The world's gone. There's a new heaven and earth. Your faith will carry you through all of this. But there's this other image. I was just talking about that this earlier. About God. When you've watched one, Gold Divers and Gold, uh, gold Divers and Gold Rush on Discovery, not on doing out there or anything, what they do is they melt their gold down. And when they melt the gold down, there's like a scummy stuff that comes to top. Yeah? Uh, and that's counted in, in the gold. But when you melt it, it all rises to the top. And what they do is they get like a little piece of metal and they go, Wipe it off. And what's left is pure and very valuable. And friends, there will be times when you feel like your faith is in a furnace. There will be times when you're thinking, oh, it's a bit too hot to handle here. <laughs> it really is. You know what's happening during those times? Ross is coming to the top. Ross is coming and he's just waiting for God to skim it off. And what's left is pure. I don't know what times you're going through today. I really, really don't. But what I do know is God is perfecting me. <coughs> the song, I think we had it last week, didn't we, Donald? Love Divine, Love Loves from uh, Excelling. And it says right at the end, change from glory into glory, till in heaven I take my place, till I set, set the crown before me. Friends, if you are in the cooking pot at the moment, God is doing a work. He's removing the impurities. You know, I, when people get married, sometimes I, I had it on the phone the other day. This lady got around and she said, I've been living with Fred for 32 years, but I really think it's time we got married. There's nothing you can tell me about living together. I've heard this story so many times, you know, it's like a, a record on repeat. We've been together for four years, we've been together on. Uh... When you get married, those who are married will know. You go into a different stage, a different type of learning about each other, a different way of really entering into the other person's life. And what, um, what scripture tells us, it says, the two become one. A man and a woman become one. When you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're marrying yourself. And you to learn more and more and more about him. He already knows everything about you. You learn more and more about him. It's changing, it's revealing. And you know what's right at the centre of it? It's love. God's love for you and for me. That's our hope. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross to take the penalty of sin for you and for me. Friends, our topic today was living hope. I want to ask
ask the question, have you a living hope? Have you, as one of God's elect, said, Lord, I will serve you and I mean it. Is that something you've done? What I want to do is encourage you that God, from the beginning of time, knows you, has known you. And he wants you to make that commitment. It's time. Time to worship him. Put our hearts in him. You know, the way of the world is temporary. My father-in-law was obsessed by the news. He really was obsessed by the news. He had, I can remember uh, one day went to see him and he said, My word! He didn't actually say my word, but I'll say my word. It's my word, they're repeating the news! He'd have that, um, you know, the 24 hours news channel, and he'd been watching it again and again. They're repeating the news! And Because he used to watch the news constantly. When I was taking up a, a little bit of carpet in our house, because we were doing a little bit of work, do you know what was underneath the, underneath the carpet? An old newspaper. And do you know what? It had no relevance to me whatsoever. It was 1980 something and it was the past. It had gone. It had faded. And some people get so obsessed with, I need to know, 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 I need to know. I need to know. But those things, they pass and fade away. Your faith. Put your trust into Jesus and it doesn't fade. That's of importance for now and forever. My last little bit, because I am cutting a long story short. If we come to concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with greatest of care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing. He predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they have spoke these things, and have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, spent from heaven, even angels, on to look into these things. Friends, in heaven, right now, angels are looking down. Heaven, angels are looking at you and me and what they will glory and rejoice in. If someone today says, I choose life and life eternal. I put my trust into you. Can you imagine the angels looking down from you today if you put that choice really into action. Not pretend action, not just the words, but really put it into action. This is what he wants for you and me today. Be sure and certain that today, tomorrow, and forever after, this is the cross of Christ. We're going to sing again. I did make a long story very, very short. It's all right. I don't have it out on the street. Um, St. Lawrence is day at four o'clock. Well, I've four months in there. What are we singing? We're uh, about the Redeemer. Guide me over the Redeemer. Yeah. Filtering through this barren land. Uh, yeah. Folks, if you're new here or <coughs> if you don't know what happens over giving, uh, there are boxes put about, uh, we don't take an offering up in the service, but if you wish to contribute, you don't have to contribute, but if you wish to contribute, find a, a box, put your offering in there, and, and we, uh, we we take that in the way it is. And the rest of that says, we take it.